Hi everyone, I'm back to read Peek into the Past from Felicity Learns a Lesson, a School Story, Book Two. Looking back, 1774, A Peek into the Past. School in 1774. A mother teaching her children in 1756. The horn book left was named for the thin see-through layer of cow's horn that protected the lesson sheet. Back in colonial times when Felicity was growing up, there were few schools. Instead, children learned to read and write at home. Parents taught their children to read using a horn book that they often practice reading from the Bible. They learn to write with a quill pen made from a feather dipped into ink from colored powder and water. To keep the ink blotting from blotting, they sprinkled it with pounce, which was like sand. Paper was expensive, so most children practiced writing their letters from one edge to the other in a copy book. Often they made the copy books by sewing sheets, sheets of paper together with needle and thread. Children from wealthy families were taught by a tutor, a young man with some college education who lived in the family's house and taught the children. Sometimes the boys, but not the girls, then went to a grammar school where they learned subjects such as geography, Greek, and Latin. The grammar school in Williamsburg was part of the College of William and Mary. Boys could start there when they were 12 years old and stay in the same school all the way through college. This says, children learned at penmanship, looked at penmanship samples when they practiced writing. This inkstand holds the inkwell and sander full of pounce. It was very important for young girls to learn fancy sewing. The colorful sampler, this colorful sampler is from England. But girls like Felicity were giving, given a very different education. People thought girls didn't need to study ideas in books since they were expected to marry and to run a home. Some people even thought it was impractical for girls to spend too much time reading. There's a long handle on this fry pan helped protect the kitchen workers from the hot cooking fire. Instead, mothers taught their daughters the art of housewifery, which included cooking, sewing, and preserving food. Girls had to learn how to manage a household, to, di to, to direct the work of slaves and servants, and to serve an elegant meal to many people with entertainment afterwards. Often girls were sent to teachers like Miss Manderley to learn to dance, play musical instruments, and practice fancy stitchery. They were also taught the proper way to serve tea. At tea lessons, they practiced their manners and learned to carry on polite conversation. Many of the colonists had come to America from England where tea was a popular drink and tea time was an important hour of the day. The tea ceremony was a reminder of the English background and traditions. Some teenage boys and girls became apprentices like Ben, learning to become shopkeepers and craftsmen by working for a merchant, milliner, blacksmith, or wig maker. Of course, school was, has never been the only place people learn. The busy, bustling village of Williamsburg had a newspaper that reported the important events of the time. People in shops, taverns, and private homes talked about the unfair ways the King of England treated the colonists. The colonists were learning to make difficult choices. Many felt 
that they had worked hard to build lives in America and did not want to be ruled by a king who was far away in England. They did not think it was fair to have to pay taxes to the king for things like tea that they bought in stores in America. People such as the Merrimans who agreed that the colonists should be independent from England were called patriots. People such as the Coles who still wanted the colonies to be ruled by the king were called loyalists. One famous patriot was Thomas Jefferson who wrote the Declaration of Independence explaining why the colonists wanted to be free from the king's rule. Other patriots like George Washington, Patrick Henry, and Patrick Henry came to the capital in Williamsburg to discuss forming a new country called the United States of America. Imagine what important lessons a nine-year-old girl like Felicity learned every day in that lively place called Williamsburg. Lessons about loyalty and independence, about freedom and self-reliance. And here's the desk. It says, some people think Thomas Jefferson, right here, wrote the first draft of the Declaration of Independence in his Windsor writing chair. Here's the picture where it says, angry colonists dumped tea from England into the ocean so no one could sell it or drink it. And that is the end of our book. And that was the book, Felicity Learns a Lesson, a School Story, book two. I hope you liked it. I will see you next time.